What is going on to all my TV fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new early TV series review for a new HBO Max limited series based on a DC comic by the name of DMZ which will be coming to HBO Max on Thursday, March 17th. I got a chance to check it out early and I'm really excited to let you all know what I thought about this series who happened to be executive produced by Ava DuVernay who also directed an episode. It's based on a DC comic. It has a really great cast. Is it worth checking? now we're going to break it all down here in this spoiler free review but before we do so make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts if you're new to the channel we are building something special here and i want you to be a part of it so if you love early movie reviews tv reviews live streams well come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell as you can see on the screen now if you enjoyed this spoiler free tv review well make sure to give it a thumbs up and also share this review to anyone you know that might be interested in this series but more importantly once you've seen it what did you think about it? Also, if you read the comic that this is based upon, did it do it justice? Did this four episode limited series do the comics justice? And if so, which one did you prefer more? And then if you were like me and never read the comics, what did you think about this series as a whole? Your pros, your cons, were you satisfied by the ending? Were you underwhelmed by the ending? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So going back to it, I never read DMZ, but I was pretty excited about it when I heard about this project a couple years ago when we got the news that unfortunately Ava DuVernay wasn't going to be directing New Gods, which still upsets me to this day, but that she had two other DC projects she was working on. One, I believe, is on CW by the name of Naomi, if I'm not mistaken, and then, of course, DMZ. Well, here we are discussing it. Is it worth checking out? Well, let's break it all down. First and foremost, let me put you all up on some game that might not be too familiar with DMZ like I wasn't. It basically is a 72 issue that ran between the years of 2005 and 2012. And the series is set in the near future where a second American Civil War has turned the island of Manhattan into a demilitarized zone also known as DMZ caught between the forces of the United States of America and the free states of America. America. So what did I think about this four episode limited series? Well, first and foremost, let's focus on the positives. And I got to say, this show has a lot going on. There's a lot of political stuff going on, a lot of characters, subplots that don't really add up, which we'll talk a little bit about later. But focusing on the pros, there is a theme and a story about redemption, a character changing who they used to be and trying to be better, right? And I kind of enjoyed that element of the story and more focusing on the narrative at hand when we have our main character, Alma, who was played by Rosario Dawson. If you saw the trailer, they pretty much lay it out pretty simply where once the war kind of breaks out, which is eight years prior to the main storyline, her and her son, who she loves so much, they unfortunately get split up. And for the last eight years, Alma has been in search to looking for her son. And if she's going to find him, is he going to be the same person that she knew eight years ago? And that's kind of the intrigue of this story and kind of the main heart and soul of the narrative is the family dynamic. I think there are a lot of things to be said about how you used to know someone, how their their product, their environment, can you change that person? Can you redeem that person? And I kind of like what the story had to add to that conversation. And not just Alma and, and the search of her son, but also there's other like leaders within, because again, this is Manhattan the Island is his own you know country at this point and there's different groups of people and within those different groups the leaders they have to kind of redeem themselves because the last eight years they've had to harden themselves they've had to kind of shut themselves off to society and kind of the normalcy of being a human being so there are different other characters within this show that have to rediscover what it means to be a human being so I kind of like when the story focuses on that as well as the family dynamic and Alma looking for her son was probably the most interesting aspects of this story but transition into the performances I gotta say it because I'm gonna focus on it a little bit later in my criticisms I thought that the performances really gave me more than they were given what I mean by that was I felt like what they were given on the page they had to kind of improvise and kind of add more life to the character. And I want to start off with Rosario Dawson, who I'm a big fan of her work. She as Alma, or as you watch the series, she later becomes goes by the name of Z. Her story of a mother in search of her son, and if she is able to find him, who is this boy? Is he the same kid I knew eight years ago, or has he changed? Has he become a product of his environment? I really enjoyed seeing her journey, even though sometimes it was a little bit frustrating what she did and what how she put herself before others and we'll get to that a little bit later but focusing on 
the mother and son relationship? Can she find her son? If so, all these other people that she's interacting with, the past that she has with them, the belief that she has in the people. Again, she has a very different kind of thought process because she's been removed for the DMZ. So she kind of knows what the outside world looks like. And she's bringing in all of those kind of feelings and those emotions, those kind of rationalities into this kind of area that has kind of went mad max and people are doing their own thing and people kind of have a second chance to be maybe better or for worse and seeing her bringing her kind of kind of heart and soul. She's a nurse, so she's naturally wants to help people. Seeing that journey that she goes on was was definitely a, 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 a positive of the show. And again, I thought that Rosario Dawson gave me more in the role than what she was given on the page. And you can see that a lot throughout the show, especially when it comes to the emotional aspects. But transitioning into Benjamin Pratt, who is the villain of the show by the name of Parco. Now, he is the leader of the Uptown crew. He has his whole group of people. He's trying to run for mayor and really trying to take control of the DMZ and he's really interesting because he tells the people what they want to hear but he has his own kind of selfish reasons of why he's doing what he's doing I thought that and I'm a big fan of Benjamin I thought that he really kind of brought uh, a different side of himself to this because I normally see him as like the good guy or the you know the the the, the guy that the women want to be with rom- rom-coms and I see him in some dramas but I really enjoyed this other side of him because he as the show kind of goes on he becomes less and less of a good person and becomes more selfish and menacing so I enjoyed what we got with Parko and he has some of the more entertaining aspects of this show and I have to say this next actor here Han Lee now I have only seen one thing of Han Lee and he was in the most recent season of C and he was one of my favorite characters of this new season I've been saying it and I gotta watch it because after this performance and what I seen him in with C I gotta watch Warrior which I know is on HBO HBO Max I think there's gonna be a new season but either putting that aside he as Wilson who is the leader of the Chinatown crew He was fantastic. I wish we got more from the character because he was someone that kind of reminded me, speaking of DC, which this is based on a DC comic, he reminded me a little bit of Harvey Dent, a.k.a. Two-Face because he has two sides of him. He has his one side that Alma knows is is a sweet guy who has, you know, aspirations and goals of being someone important. But then when he switches over to his leadership side, you see that menacing nature of the character. So I really enjoy Wilson. Again, I wish we got more of him, but I I love what we got with him because he really kind of stole every scene that he was in. But uh, a surprising young group of actors, one by the name of Odie and Nico. Speaking of Odie, I really enjoyed that young man's performance because he has a subplot involving him and his grandfather and a story about discovering who he is as a person again kind of redeeming himself from being kind of closed off and being by himself to kind of open himself up I really enjoyed that young man's performance I thought Odie even though it was a really small plot and it didn't have a lot of stuff going on besides him as grandfather but I enjoyed that element of that character and then his friendship with Nico I really enjoyed that I thought those young young actors even though overall they didn't have a ton to do uh, besides once you get to the finale and something kind of shakes out there but I, I enjoyed those younger performances as well so wrapping up my last things I want to mention with positives the story does have some type of relatability factor because it is a very kind of political show and it kind of reflects some of the pol- political stuff that we're going through in today's time so I thought it made it very topical and relatable in some sense and then again going back to the family element That was the best part of the show. The family drama, the ties of Alma on the search for her son, you know, Parco and his relationship with his close secondhand man and also his hitman and all that stuff. That that stuff was the best stuff of the show. So getting into my cons. Now, I have to relate this show to a very normal thing that we all do, doing our laundry. This show to me is a perfect metaphor of when you put too many clothes in the washer. What happens? Well, the washer starts shaking. You know, it's imbalanced. And this show has a lot of imbalancing going on. I mean, there's so many things going on with the DMZ. There is a political uh, politician thing going on. There's an election going on. There's the subplots that this show almost had a feel to, I almost feel like I was watching a season two of something because there's a lot of like, oh, you should already know this. And now I don't know if the show expects it audience to have read the comics but I felt that type of exclusivity to the story because I felt like wait who is this why how do you know each other where is all the subplot where's all of the the character development it's lacking very heavily in this show I mentioned how it's based on a 72 comic book issue that took place between a span of seven years 
They took those ideas and those characters and the world building and condensed it to a four hour miniseries. It's like, whose idea was that? Because there is just so many fill in the blanks. You got to know who this character is. Just look it up. Look up the comics. It's like there's so many times where the creators expect you to know certain things without giving you it. And there's like a, a hints of exposition where you get these little quick little one offs with characters like, oh, I remember this time when we did this. Oh, or they say when the war happened. It's like, I want to see those things. I can't just take for take your word from it. I want to have those emotional beats. I want to see those moments because it left it on deaf ears. It made everything feel hollow. And the biggest thing that I had an issue with this series, I didn't really care too much because the show didn't take its time to develop the characters and the stories that they had at hand. There is little to no character development. The world building is almost non-existent. Like I had mentioned, there's a governmental aspect of the show and there's a world global kind of aspect the show doesn't spend any time on focusing on that at all. We're just condensed to the DMZ and not really understanding what is the world going through at this moment. So it was very frustrating and it felt cheap at times that they couldn't expand the world and everything was just rushed to get to the finish line, which was so frustrating with this series. Going back to the characters, I mentioned how I felt Rosario Dawson did her best job as she, as she possibly could. But Alma, she was so frustrated at times because, again, without giving too much away, she's been outside the DMZ and she's given the task to go, well, not given the task, she wants to go on the task to look for her son. And in doing so, she comes across all these different uh, fractions and groups that have been you know, a, a staple in the DMZ for over eight years. And she comes into the wreck, she comes into the situation and wrecks shop on everyone's thing. I'm like, what the, f what is going on? She had so much plot armor. It was so frustrating. She would come into these establishments, Chinatown, Uptown, all the different groups, which by the way, there's like eight different groups and we spend like five minutes with each group. So it was almost like, what was the point of the groups? What was the point of breaking them up when we don't spend any time with them again? four episodes was the biggest enemy of this show or in the series, but she would go into these situations and just literally switch up everyone's ideology. She would switch up all the stuff they had going on. I'm like, y'all are seriously going to want me to watch the show and believe that this person that has no combat skills, no authority, no type of, you know, a menacing nature to her that she can come in and switch up all their plans. That was so frustrating to watch. Cause I'm like, seriously, this is what you all expect me to believe with the show. It was unbelievable at points and very frustrating at points, which also brings me into these subplots and these unnecessary things that really didn't add up to anything. There's relationships between Parco and his new girl and how that ties into Alma. And again, without giving too much away in regards to this mystery character that you find out about in episode one, a lot of that stuff just became unnecessary. Uh, again, the family drama was the best part of the show, but it was also one of the more frustrating parts of the show at the same time. And when you see the show, you'll know what I'm talking about. And again, I can't understand how they took, I, I haven't read the comics, but I would imagine over seven years, 72 issues, the world building, the character developments, the more quieter moments, the action moments were probably more highlighted in the comics because if you think this is a comic book show based on action, you know, maybe some fight sequences, you, you get close to none of that in this series. And I wasn't really expecting this high obtained action show, but I was hoping for a little bit more spunk. Like for example, there's an element in this show without giving it away, this is, is, is like second, third episode where we have two of our bigger groups coming head to head, having this kind of all out war. Someone falls out of a window and in the midst of this fighting to the death, they just stop. It's like, what is going on with this show? It lacks action, it lacks stakes, but more importantly, it lacks care for the characters. That's really my biggest issue with the show. And I gotta go back to Ava DuVernay, who I love to pieces. Uh, when They See is one of the greatest limit series I've ever seen. She directs the first episode. Right off the gate, I'm like, oh, this show is troubling because I'm not feeling anything with this show. And Ava DuVernay is such a director that brings feel. She brings emotions, but I just wasn't feeling for her. And Ernest Dickinson, who's the, also who directs the rest of the series, who's a fantastic director. He's done some really great, ama amazing projects on television. I didn't feel it. I just didn't feel it. So before I go into this whole rant, which I've already kind of went into, let me give you all my overall thoughts and let you know if it's worth checking out. But before we do so, make sure if you haven't already to like, share, comment, and come and join the community by subscribing. Overall, DMZ has a, a 
interesting family drama dynamic, but when you take that aside, when the show tries to be this political kind of war, DMZ, demilitarized zone that really doesn't dive deep into the character, that really doesn't do any world building, that rushes to the finish line, and it's just so much going on, and all of it doesn't really add into anything. So if you ask me, hey, Elliot, should I take the four hours, which by the way, it, I watched it in one sitting because I had a you know four hours just to kind of kill... I think four episodes was the biggest detriment to the show. This should have been at minimum eight episodes to really expand on the characters. Should you watch it? I say no. I don't think it's worth your time. But hey, if you want to give it a chance, you like these performers, uh, these actors, you like Ava DuVernay. Again, I support her to the fullest, but this was a strikeout to me. And it's not just Ava DuVernay. She's not the only one that's behind the show. She only directed one episode. She executive produced this. She didn't write any of the scripts, but... She's the big standout. So I have to say for, say for Ava DuVernay for me, it's an L. It's an L for Ernest Dickinson, and it's an L for these writers. This was a show that had a lot of potential, but just kind of fell short for me. So I don't think it's worth checking out, but that's just my thoughts. I want to know yours in the comments. If you read the comics, how well did the show handle it? If you haven't read the comics, how did you take in the show? Your pros, your cons? Were you disappointed like me? Let's talk about it all in the comments. I wish I could have loved this show because I really wanted it to be great. But it was pretty bad. But hey, that's just my thoughts again. Appreciate you all watching this review up until this point. If you haven't already, just a friendly reminder to like, share, come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you're staying safe. As you can see on the screen now, subscribe to my channel. Check out my other content. We'll catch you on the next video.